Well, I have finally got round to starting my wildlife pond, something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I've had a butler sink sitting in the garden for quite a few years now, but not quite knowing how to go about it. So this is my butler sink which I'm trying to turn into a wildlife pond. I've managed to um, close up the hole with a self-sealing silicon plug which I've just fixed with some sealant, some aquatic sealant. So I've been told to leave that for 36 hours um, and then that should be set firm and then I can start topping it up with water. Um, once I've done that, I'm then going to go and choose my plants. I filled it up with water last night and it hasn't leaked at all, so I know that it's watertight. I also was um, extremely lucky and um, put out a request on local selling site last night if anybody had any bricks they didn't want and a lovely lady um, had 12 that I could have so I'm making a ledge with those for some of the marginal plants to sit on and also an exit route for any critters that get in there or frogs, um, hedgehogs or birds so that they can get out if, if anything happens. Um, so I'm going to crack on with it. Oh, the other thing I've done is um, I've got a load of gravel today that I've just bought from the garden centre. So I'm going to give that a really good wash first before that goes in the pond. So let's get cracking. So this is it so far. So you can see that I've um, filled it up to the overflow line. Um, I've got my bricks in place. Um, some of those might come out. I'm not sure yet. It depends what plants I get. Um, I've put some gravel in, but it's not really clean enough, so I'm going to give it a really good wash. So I've got myself two buckets of water. And this is the first slot. Feel all the sediment in the bottom of that one. So that looks a lot better. So that's going to go in the pond. I've just filled this um, bucket up with tap water. So it's really cold and then I'm putting my hands in the pond and it's got a lovely temperature to it now where it's warmed in the sun. All right, let's do the next slot. I've been doing a lot of research on the internet to work out which is the best plants to use. Obviously I want to use native varieties. I 
And I've got an aquatic centre not far from where I am. And I went over there yesterday, that's where I got the sealant from. And they've got loads of plants, but at the time I hadn't really researched, so I didn't know what I was looking at. So that's probably something I'm going to do tomorrow, go and have a good old browse and see what they've got. I certainly want a mini or a small um, water lily. And some marginal plants and some that oxygenate, hopefully try and keep the pool clear. So that's, yeah, it's not too bad, that's looking okay. you when I'm done. Right, that's all done and despite me giving that gravel um, a double wash, um, there's still a lot of sediment but I think if I just leave that um, for the next 24 hours that will just settle um, and then the next stage will be um, choosing my plants and then putting them in the pond. So. Um, I'll come back to you when I get to that stage. <clears throat> so it's now day three of creating my wildlife pond. Now, two days ago, I made it watertight by sealing the plug hole with um, aquatic silicon, which has then dried, and then filled it up with water and we didn't have any leakages at all, so I know that it's watertight. And then yesterday, um, I washed a load of new gravel and placed that at the bottom. Um, I've got bricks in there as well to create a shelf so that I can put plants on. And this morning, I've been into Cambridge to one of the big garden centres there that had a, an aquatic area um, and I've bought my plants. So I'm going to go through the ones that I've bought and explain why I've bought the ones that I have. I had to do quite a bit of research because I didn't really know much about wildlife ponds and what would be ideal to um, attract different species. So the three things you need you need oxygenators, you need a marginal plants and you need floating plants. Floating plants give species shade and also shades the water to a degree so that it doesn't get too hot in full sun and to try and restrict the amount of algae growth. Um, marginal plants, again, they're little areas that plants uh, that um, creatures can hide in. And um, I've got what else on, oh, and the oxygenating plant is to help um, obviously create oxygen and make the pond as healthy as possible. And they all work by taking the nutrients out of the water um, to help keep it clear and to keep the algae down or algae down. Um, so let me show you what I've got. So it's the yellow iris and this is going to go on one of the shelves and it's going to be a marginal plant. Hopefully it'll attract things like dragonflies. And then I've also got creeping jenny. So these, this is yellow as well, it has tiny yellow flowers. So the overall theme is yellow and white. I have some frog bit, which is a floating plant, and again that takes up all the um, nutrients in the water. You don't plant it in uh, soil at all, so that just floats on the surface. The oxygenating plant, this just sits at the bottom and 
does what it says. Um, and this is, I can't remember what's, well, this is corn wort. So I'll get that out of the bag in a minute and show you that. And um, the last one is a lily. So I've bought a white lily with a yellow centre and that will be slowly put to the bottom of the pond and, and the leaves will float to the surface. So I'll um, just finish my coffee and then I'll take you over to the pond and we'll go and have a look. So the first thing I'm going to put in is the iris. Um, it may be that um, I don't need the bricks. I'll see how deep it is. Uh, I may need to take those bricks out. Let's take this one out for a minute. So that's already. marginal plant is this one so mainly topping up I'm not sure I'm not really sure I think that might need a bit of a wash. It seems to be covered in algae. So I'll come back in a minute. This has had um, a good wash now, so I'm gonna just put that in the bottom and let it do its own thing. I think the next plant to go in is going to be the frog bit. And then I guess finally, I'm going to put the lily in. I lower that gently. Right, see how that settles. So it's another glorious day out in the garden. Um, it's going to be really hot today, there's not a cloud in the sky. Now yesterday I finished my wildlife pond and I've let it settle overnight and I'm going to show you in a minute what it's like now. 
but the water has cleared an awful lot where any sediment has settled. Um, I've seen quite a few birds sitting on the bricks at the edge um, and taking a drink, but not at any point when I've been able to film it, but hopefully I'll be able to catch them at some point and add that in future videos. But I'm just going to sit back now um, and not do anything in the garden today. Everything's been given a good drink. Paddy's pinched my seat, hence I'm sitting on the floor at the moment because I haven't got the heart to move him. Um, but we're going to have a lazy day today. So um, I hope you're all enjoying the summer sun. And um, I'll see you in the next video. If you like the content, um, before I go, if you could um, subscribe to my channel, that would be really, really helpful. It is slowly growing. I'd like to um, achieve more this year, if at all possible. So thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.